and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how to add swim bra cups and a shelf bra into your favorite rash guard pattern. Stay tuned. So here you can see the finished product of what we're going to be creating today. I'm going to show you how to insert your own bra cups and shelf bra into an existing rash guard pattern. For this particular project, I'm going to be working with the Made for Mermaids Regan Rash Guard Pattern. It's available in both children and women's sizing, and it does not come with a lining or a shelf bra included. So I'm going to show you how I add those two things in today's tutorial. Okay, so it's time to gather your supplies to make your rash guard. What you're going to need is sharp scissors or a rotary cutter to cut out your pattern and swimsuit. Um, I also like to use some pattern weights. These are from a great store on Etsy that I'll link below. You're going to wanna to go ahead and get your swim cups that you're going to be using in your size. These can be ordered from a sewing system supply store or a local store such as uh, Joanne Fabric if you're in the United States, but I also like to order mine in bulk from Amazon or you can get like a three pack and I will link those. And then you're going to need your swim rash guard pattern as well. And then obviously you'll need anything else that is called for in the pattern to sew it together, the appropriate thread, the appropriate needles, a sewing machine or a serger and any elastic that's included in your pattern. So let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and cut out the pieces for your rash guard. I'm choosing to make a long sleeve option with a shelf bra with added cups. This tutorial is mainly to show how to add the shelf bra and cups, not necessarily how to sew the whole pattern together, but I'll go ahead and go over the pieces that I needed to create mine. This is my neckband piece. I have two sleeve pieces. I have one back piece. And then from the front, I cut one full piece from the main swimsuit, one full piece from lining. This part is optional. However, I have found just having that extra layer of lining does help protect from any of the swim cup kind of showing through. And then you need one shelf bra piece cut from your pattern. Now, how do you cut the shelf bra piece? Let's get started with that. So if you're working with a pattern like the Women's Reagan, it already has a crop cut line as part of the pattern. I have found for me that this crop line works really well for the shelf bra piece. I actually attach my elastic and then I will bring it up so that none of the elastic is attached or is touching my skin. And I have just found that this length, this cut line is perfect for that. So go ahead and cut out one using a crop cut line if it's available to you. If it's not available to you, simply lay a maybe a tank top or a sports bra, whatever you have from your home on top of your pattern and kind of get an idea where that bottom line is going to end. I would think a sports bra with that band of elastic underneath would be a good um, would be a good item to use and you'll just want to lay it on top and add a little bit of seam allowance underneath and trace your line across where that would be when you lay it on top of your pattern and you can use something like that and then follow the lines obviously that match whatever your rash guard is for the sleeve opening and the neck opening and the side line all you really want to use that sports bra for is to determine how long you need your piece to be the first step I'm going to do is just to baste in my lining. And the reason that I wanna do that is this pattern actually doesn't call for a lining, but I know I wanna add it. And the way I like to do mine is actually backing this lining right to the back of the main swimsuit fabric. I'm not going to sandwich in my shelf bra in between with the bra cups. You could do that. And I tried it with my first version and what I found is um, I didn't like the way that it covered the bra cups in the front and was kind of pulling and resisting. And it also showed through a little bit on the other version I made, which was a white base swimsuit. 
So I have just found that I prefer to go ahead and put my lining right up against the main swimsuit side. So what I'm going to do here is just line up my lining fabric and my main fabric, and I'm just going to quickly baste around to hold these edges together. If you are basting yours together, you'll just wanna use a longer straight stitch within the seam allowance. That way you know that that piece is going to be cut off when you serge your pieces together or when you sew them later. If you don't have a serger, you may wanna do that in a long stretch stitch, just if you're not gonna be cutting off that edge so that you maintain all the stretch of your fabric. Okay, so now it's time for the fun part, determining your bra cup position for your shelf bra. So for this, you're going to need the shelf bra crop piece that you cut out and your two swim cups. So for this step to be nice and accurate, accurate, you're gonna to wanna to do a little bit of measuring. Now, if you're like me and you have a cut mat that is kind of showing through, you can use that as some marking guidelines. So I'm gonna take a moment and line up And if you don't, you can just go ahead and use a ruler for this piece. So what you wanna make sure that you're watching is kind of your center front line, because if we attach our, um, if we attach our bra cups and we're too close to the center, or we don't sew them in, obviously we don't want any kind of shifting, we're gonna be sewing our cups in. But it just gives you a nice uh, visual to be able to kind of see what you're working with and where you wanna place these cups. So what you wanna do is measure across your own bust. And I want you to measure from the apex or the center front most point on your chest, what's going to be sitting here in your bra cup, and measure that on your body from one to the other so that you can determine um, where you're gonna put your cups and what this distance is going to roughly be here. So go ahead and measure that on yourself, wherever that might be. Now to determine where to place the bra cup, you can measure on yourself down if you'd like. You can use a dress form if you have it. You can hold it up against your body, whatever you find to be the easiest way. But what we're going to do now is just kind of do a pin um, fit of this portion. So I have my bra cup with the inside portion of the cup turned towards the lining. And what we're going to be doing is once we have it pinned in place, we're going to be stitching it on and then we're actually going to be cutting away the backing of that swim fabric so that your chest is able to fill in the cup. There's nothing pushing back or blocking against it with that lining fabric. So you'll wanna set them down on Again, this sometimes is a lot easier to do on a dress form if you'd like to use that. I'm just gonna show it to you flat here. So use the measurement that you took. And for me, it's just past uh, the seven inch mark. And so I'm gonna eyeball this and kind of see, okay, here's my center front line. Do I have them evenly spaced in the center? And it looks like I do not. So I'm just gonna kind of fiddle with mine here. And again, this is going to be a test um, fit. So go ahead and line those up however you think it's going to work the best. And then you're just going to go ahead and take some pins and pin it together all the way around so that it's not gonna shift on you and then simply try it on. Make sure that this fits exactly how you want it to fit um, and, and move cups as necessary once you've tried it on if they're not in the right spot. So go ahead and take the time to do that now. This will take a few minutes. It may take a few times of trial and error as well and moving things around, but take the time to get this, this right. Um, you don't wanna sew them in lopsided or have them too far out or too close together in the center front. So go ahead and take your time on this step. And I will say this step can be a little bit challenging. It can be difficult to kind of hold this up to yourself. Just do the best you can and use a lot of pins here. 
I know it's kind of annoying to have to move this all out, but by having that measurement that I showed you, it at least gives you a good starting point. And then once you've tried it on, you can tweak and make little measurements, um, changes and adjustments, and then keep trying it back on. And I, again, I understand this is a little bit difficult to do um, and hold it up to yourself, but you wanna get a rough idea that you are in the right location and you don't wanna be pulling this out later. Once we sew them in, they're in. Okay, so once you've done your pin fitting and you have the cups securely pinned in, make sure you use lots of pins here, you're gonna to head to your machine. We're gonna set our machine on a zigzag stitch here. Go to a three width and a two length for mine. You can set yours how you would prefer. And then we're just going to start at one side and we're going to stitch all the way down and around the entire cup. When you get down to an edge to turn it, simply put your needle down into the fabric. I'm gonna pull this pin at the same time. I always pin my pins backwards. <laughs> Pivot it and then go ahead and begin sewing this direction. And there's really no need to backstitch. If you've ever tried to remove a zigzag stitch, you'll know why that's not really needed. Go ahead and do the other side. The way I chose to do it here is go ahead and sew on this side with the cups facing out towards me and we're going to be trimming away on the inside piece. You could reverse this and sew it the other way so that the finished edge will actually be out here on the outside of your cup, or I should say unfinished edge. You could do it that way as well. Um, really either direction will work. So what you need now is a sharp pair of scissors, preferably something smaller. These are some favorite scissors that I've probably had for, I don't know, 15 years, I wanna say, from Ginger, um, and they're great little uh, scissors. And we're just gonna take our fabric, we're gonna find somewhere to cut a hole in it, and we're going to trim very close to this stitching line without cutting into the stitching line. We just wanna remove this excess fabric that is sitting inside of our cup. Because as you can see from releasing that fabric, there's now room in the cup for your body <laughs> before it would have been pushing back against you. So you'll just wanna take your time and just slowly start trimming. Okay, and you can go back with your scissors and try to trim that up more if you'd like, but this is basically how it will look when you're done trimming. You'll wanna repeat that on the other side. Okay, the next step is your elastic. Now, typically when sewing anything for swimwear, you want to use swimwear elastic, and it's going to hold up better to uh, chlorine, sun, everything. However, I have not been able to find swimwear elastic more than three eighths of an inch and this quarter inch, which you can see I do buy in bulk. Um, if you're going to sew swimwear at all, like <laughs> even just a few pieces, just buy it in bulk. It's so much cheaper that way, I find. That's what I tell myself anyway. Um, so instead, I want something thicker here. You're going to want to use at least a one inch, if not one and a half inch, elastic for your shelf bra piece. The larger that you are in the bust area, uh, the more supportive you want your elastic, you may want to go up to an inch and a half. This is an inch and a quarter elastic. And as you can see, I also buy this on the roll. So I will link where I buy all these things, but I have just found over the 20 years of sewing that I've been doing, that buying a little bit at a time just financially does not make sense for me. So buy in bulk, you'll also find that you're not as frustrated when you're looking for your elastic and you can't find any. So what I would like to do here, so take your elastic and you kind of want to work it out just a little bit here. And I'm going to cut mine, laying it on the bottom about, maybe an inch and a half shorter, so it pulls. You can determine how 
tight you want this. You don't want it super tight because I'm gonna put in a disclaimer right now. The way that we're adding this shelf bra piece to the front of the rash guard, this side is gonna pull in slightly underneath what you're wearing and that side seam is gonna go in slightly. If that bothers you, you'll need to cut the back crop piece and make a completely separate um, shelf bra all the way around with the elastic that goes all the way around your body and the, it is not attached here at the side seams and you'd have to figure out the best way to do that. For this tutorial, I'm going to just go ahead and do that. I don't mind that it comes in just, a, it's like a very slight pull. I'll show you at the final what I'm talking about, but I do wanna give that little disclaimer here. So you don't wanna cut it so tight that it's gonna be pulling this in a lot, but you do want a little bit of tension here. So what you wanna do is take this one inch elastic so this next step is really going to be dependent on your width of elastic and your preference of how this will be finished. For me, I don't love the feel of elastic right up against my skin. And I have just enough room to turn mine under so that it's right underneath that bust line. Um, but you may want to use closer to a one inch elastic if you don't have the room to turn or you can simply just attach the elastic wherever you would like it. So if you want it right under the bust line and it doesn't bother you on your skin, you're gonna stretch it and go ahead and attach it with the zigzag stitch right underneath. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your piece, if you're gonna do it like me, and I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it to fit at my machine, and I'm going to do a wide zigzag stitch here down the middle to just really secure it in to my fabric. Okay, so now I've sewn it with a wide zigzag here. I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna fold it up on itself. Now, if I had the extra room, I would have done it a little bit different so that this edge was folded over, but I was just gonna run here a little too tight to my cups. So I didn't do it. It's not quite as pretty. You can make it as pretty as you'd like on your own. So what I'm gonna do is fold this edge up and then I'm just gonna come back towards the top edge with my machine and again I'm going to do a zigzag stitch while I stretch this like that all the way across to secure the elastic and then that way it's going to be bumped up right underneath my bust line which is what I was going for. Here it is finished from this side again. Is it the prettiest thing I've ever sewn? No. From this side looks pretty nice though. <laughs> so this is going to be the side towards your body and now you have your elastic in, your cups are sewn in, and now you're ready to put it together. So really the only different step here is just that my pattern didn't originally call for any cups or any kind of lining to be added. So all I'm going to do now is place this in like I will be wearing it. So I want the cups facing towards me, or I'm sorry, the cups away from me like I would be wearing this. And I want this side that I created up against my lining. Again, if you prefer to sand, sandwich this in between your lining, you can, but you're going to have some resistance here into the cups and it's not going to sit quite as nice. So that is why I choose to put the shelf bra piece right up against my body and not sandwich it into um, the fabric. So all I'm going to do, just like I did in the earlier um, part where I basted it on my lining. Now I'm just going to go ahead and baste in place this portion. And you will see, you're gonna have to pull a little bit here. And this is what I was talking about earlier when I mentioned that the elastic on the sides, this is gonna kind of pull in the fabric just slightly on that front piece. But you can see, it's not a huge stretch here. It shouldn't be bringing it in so much that it's obvious. Um, while you're wearing it, but I do wanna give that disclaimer that it will do that a little bit. So go ahead and pin it around and then baste that in. And there you have it. I've now basted it in here around the sides, up around the armhole and the neckline. And you're basically all set. At this point, you go ahead and construct the rest of your rash guard, just like you would according to the pattern instruction. And now you have yourself a nice little shelf bra with added cups all sewn in and ready to take you through the summer. 
Thanks so much for joining me today for this tutorial. While I showed you how to add swim cups and a shelf bra to a rash guard, just keep in mind that this tutorial can also be applied to other things. Maybe your favorite fitted dress or tank top that you've always wanted to be able to wear without a bra, but you want to still have that support. Go ahead and apply these same techniques and use it in some of your favorite sewing patterns that are really fitted that you'd like to have your own shelf bra and swim cups or bra cups added. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to see other content just like this. At indoorshannon.com, my blog, you can find lots of tutorials, inspirations, DIY projects, so long, and more, as well as following along on my YouTube. So I hope you'll consider doing that. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, happy sewing.